Hello everyone. This is the third video of my short series where I use data, statistics and Python to answer some of the most common questions related to climbing. In my last video, we talked about the progression through grades, plateauing and how long it takes to climb a certain grade for the first time. In this video, we're going to look at some of the factors that can affect your climbing, like age, height and weight. We're going to answer questions like does height really matter in climbing? And what about age? How much stronger would you be if you started climbing when you were young? If you haven't watched the first two videos, I strongly recommend that you watch those two first. I'll leave a link down in the description. The first question that we're going to tackle concerns age. How does age affect progression in climbing? Surely that must count, no? I mean, a teenager will probably be stronger than someone who started climbing in their 40s, even though they've both been climbing for like 10 years. Like in the previous videos, we're going to use logbook data from 88.nu, in particular the year of birth of each user, together with the year that they started climbing. Say for example that Adam was born in 1988 and he started climbing in 2018, which is when he was 30 and he climbs up to 7a. Lynn, she was born in 1993, she started climbing in 2020, so when she was 27, and she climbs up to 6c. So we have Adam, he's been climbing for 5 years, started when he was 30, max grade 7a, and then we have Lynn, who's been climbing for 3 years, started when she was 27, max grade 6c. What can we do with all these ages, times and grades? How do we put them all together and make some sense of it? Well, the first thing that we can do is that we can group people by how old they were when they started climbing. Adam and Lynn were 27 and 30 when they started climbing, so we can put them in the same group. But then Adam has been climbing for 5 years and Lynn only for 3. So we can say, if you're aged between 27 and 30 and you've been climbing for 3 years, you should expect a grade of 6c. If you've been climbing for 5 years, you should expect a 7a. Now, if you remember from the last video, this is exactly what we did to produce the progression curve, where we had the progression of grades over time for the average climber. But this time, this is only for people who started climbing when they were aged between 27 and 30. What we can do here is that we can take data from all the users across all the age ranges and then divide them into different groups. We can have a group of climbers who started climbing when they were very young, say less than 15, then 15 to 20 years old, 20 to 25, and so on and so on. What we end up with is a separate progression curve for each group of climbers who started climbing at a different age. Let's see what they look like. You can see all the progression curves here in this figure. Blue for climbers who started climbing when they were less than 15 years old, orange for climbers who started when they were 15 to 20, up to brown for climbers who started climbing when they were 35 or older. The reason I chose 35 as the last interval is simply because there weren't enough climbers in the dataset starting after this age to create an entire curve. So I had to put all these climbers together. The first thing to notice is that these curves go up and down quite a lot, especially after 10 years climbing. This is because by separating the data into different groups, we have fewer people into each point that we use for calculating the average. It's like, it's like using just Adam and Lynn instead of just hundreds of climbers. And this means that they're less reliable, and it explains why they go up and down in such a messy way. But let's see what we can still get from them. If we look at climbers starting at the earliest age, the blue curve, we can see that they climb around 60 plus when they start, which is harder than people starting later in life. For example, age 20 to 25 in green, they start around 6b plus, and age 35 and more in brown starts around 6b. Not only younger climbers seem to start with harder grades, they also achieve a higher maximum grade in their career, which is between 8a plus and 8b on average. We can see that the later people start climbing, the lower the grade they can achieve at their maximum, which is around 8a for age 15 to 20 and around 7c for age 35 or more. 
as I said earlier, the curves become very messy after 10 years of climbing, especially the purple and the brown lines for older climbers. This is because there just aren't enough people in the dataset who started climbing later in life and have been climbing for longer than 10 years, so these results are not very reliable. And we can actually see the bin chart or histogram of all the ages the people started climbing in this figure. If you remember from the previous video, a bin chart uh, simply counts how many people there are in a certain category. And here you can see that most men started climbing when they were between 15 and 25 years old, with very few climbers starting after they were 40. As always, these curves only represent averages, and individual experiences of each climber can be very different from it. So if you've only just started climbing, just don't worry about the numbers and have fun. The next topic that I want to discuss is probably one of the most controversial, and it's height. You've probably heard yourself things like, you're tall so you can just reach, or you're short so that move suits you better, and things like that. But in the grand scheme of things, does height really matter? Is there really an advantage or a disadvantage in being tall or in being short? To answer this question, I looked at all the users in the data who had their height set up in the profile, and then I grouped them together by differences of 5 cm, like users who were 180 to 185 cm, 185 to 190, and so on. For each height group, I then looked at the maximum grade the people climbed and looked at the average. The result is shown once again in a curve, both for men and for women. This curve has height on the horizontal axis and it has maximum rep point grade on the vertical axis. Let's start with men. Climbers who are shorter than 150 cm and taller than 180 cm seem to climb the lowest grades, which is around 70 plus to 7b on average. However, climbers that are taller than 2 meters and 10 reach the highest grades, which is up to 80 plus. Now, the thing is, if a route is graded hard because of a difficult crux, and very tall climbers can skip it by reaching for the next holds, I can imagine how very very tall climbers could show higher grades on average. But if you exclude this group of climbers taller than 2 meters, and they weren't that many in the dataset anyway, the optimal height for men seems to be between 160 to 170 centimeters, with an average maximum grade which is around 7c. For women, the curve is noisier because there just weren't enough women in the dataset that had height set up in the profile. But we can see from the data that 150 cm seems to be the best height, with the grade going down after that. Now, a big disclaimer here. Treat these numbers very carefully, especially for women. There were just really a few hundred women in the dataset who had height set up in the profile, so the curve is just not very reliable at all. In addition to height, some of the users also had weight saved in their profile, which allow us to calculate BMI. The formula for BMI is weight in kilogram divided by height in meters squared. Now, I know the BMI is inaccurate because it doesn't really take into account body fat versus muscle content, but this is what we have and I just thought it was interesting to analyze the data. Using the same approach as before, we can group users by the maximum grade that they've sent and then calculate the average BMI for each group. By using this strategy, we can see that there is a correlation between BMI and maximum rep point grade. The curve is shown here, where you have maximum rep point on the horizontal axis and the average BMI on the vertical axis. And we can see that most climbers have a BMI which is between 19 and 24, which is normally considered healthy, with women having a slightly lower BMI than men on average. From the curve, we can see that BMI goes down as the grade gets harder, with this trend being slightly stronger for men than it is for women. This means that climbers who climb harder grades tend to be slightly slimmer than climbers who climb lower grades. Keep in mind that, like for the other analysis, this is valid for those climbers who do climb those grades. This means that if you climb an 8A, 
chances are your BMI is probably lower than someone who climbs a 5. But this doesn't mean that if you lose weight and reduce your BMI, you will climb an 8A. And that's a very important difference. Since weight in climbing is quite a sensitive topic, I'd like to remind you that these measurements are just averages. And you can have pretty much any BMI within the healthy range and still climb pretty much any grade, like you can see from the curve. Finally, I want to discuss a very important topic that concerns these and the past two videos that I made on this analysis. Limitations. First of all, these results are based on the analysis of logbook data. And beginners don't really log their ascents. When you get into climbing, logging ascents is not really one of your priorities. As you improve and get stronger, you start having an interest in metrics and progression, which is when you probably start logging. And at least this is what happened to me. This means the lower grades are not very well represented in these analyses. On top of that, strong climbers often don't bother logging lower grades. And I know this because most of my friends are like that. They only log a sense that they think are log worthy. And this only makes this limitation even worse. Thanks, guys. Third, climbers often take breaks because of injuries, of life changes, and these are not recorded in the dataset. So these breaks can be very long and they will make the time curves more noisy and less relevant. Fourth, all these ascents logged in the dataset refer to outdoor climbing only and they are specific to the website 8a.nu, which is only used in certain parts of the world. I don't know anyone who really uses it in the UK, for example. And finally, this analysis is something that I did in my free time, and it was mostly just a personal project pushed by curiosity. There could be mistakes in the way I interpreted the data, or errors in the way I processed it, or bugs in the code, or visualization errors in the, in the plots. If you're interested and would like to collaborate on this, or also just share some feedback, please leave a comment below. You can also find more information in the original article that I wrote down in the description. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. It really motivates me to do more content like this. Instead, if you don't want to see any more videos like this, leave a comment below with the name of the root setter who invented the speed climbing route. Thank you for watching. Cool, really, really cool.